tonight that are so thankful for the messages you've shared, and they have some great questions. The first one comes from Christian Anvil out of New York, and he wants to know, for those activists, those people who are concerned, and they're under 30, um, you know, how can they make the argument, how will you guys be working to make the argument to their peers, how Obamacare is going to significantly hurt the millennial generation? This, this, of course, is the generational theft of forcing young people to pay more and more, even though they make less and are more healthy, to transfer that to people that are more wealthy and less healthy. This is a, a fundamental design flaw, and, and we encourage young people to burn their Obamacare card. And we've done a lot of that, that sort of protesting and had some fun doing it. But, Senator Lee, I wonder if you have an answer to this. Sure. And, you know, I think it is important to point that out to as many people as possible that this uh, will manifest itself, itself very significantly, very directly, very personally uh, among people who are part of the so-called millennial generation. Those are the people who will see the, the largest, uh, most consistently large spike in their premiums. And uh, like so many other things that the federal government does, relative to transferring wealth from one group of people to another. Uh, this is yet another instance of intergenerational wealth transfer. It's also putting onto the books uh, additional unfunded entitlement liabilities that the millennial generation will have to worry about uh, down the road if we don't walk away from this unsustainable law. And so that's, that really does emphasize the need point out that this is not just about Republicans versus Democrats. It's not just about liberals versus conservatives. It's about, in the first instance, the Washington political establishment against everyone else. And it's also uh, uh, about uh, uh, an effort by that Washington political establishment to transfer a lot of wealth uh, from an older generation of Americans uh, away from a younger generation of Americans uh, uh, toward an older generation of Americans. Yeah, that's not fair. It's, it's amazing to see. It's amazing to see Democrats uh, uh, basically help that uh, the bottom lines of insurance companies. When when did everything get so upside down in Washington? Um, for, for to make sure that we get more and more questions asked, I'm gonna I'm gonna spread the, the answers out amongst the three of you, if that's okay. So let's go back to Whitney and get another question. All right, thank you. So the next question is from Doug Johnson in Alabama. And he brings to light, you know, we know we're fighting the media. And he says, what are the plans to win the messaging war, knowing that you're battling a progressive left leftist media outlet? Uh, one of the two congressmen want to take that one? Um, this is Matt. I, I, I think that uh, we need to focus our attention on the fact that we're fighting for the average uh, average American. Uh, well, Matt, you just, uh, just made the point that everything's kind of been turned upside down, that um, right now it, it, it's really the Democrats that are, you know, that are fighting for, for these corporate profits, while we're, we're trying to fight, we, we were trying to fight to postpone the individual mandate uh, to give uh, fairness to the American people uh, so that they would get the same cut of the deal that Obama just gave to corporate America in postponing the, 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 the uh, business mandate. And I think that that's the message that we just have to keep staying on is that this is about fairness for every American. Uh, it's not. It, 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 it's not about uh, anything else. And I think that if we stick to that message, um, ultimately, uh, it's going to put the Democrats on the run. It really has in the last uh, week or so. And I think if we continue that message, that's the one thing that the Democrats do. I think so much more effectively than we do. Part of it is because you know they don't. Most of them just kind of check their souls at the door and they do whatever their leaders tell them to do. And uh, we have a group of people in the Republican conference, and I think Tom will tell you the same thing. We're all kind of motivated by what our hearts tell us and what our constituents tell us, and that isn't necessarily the same sometimes as what our, our political leaders tell us to do. And uh, we don't march in lockstep uh, like the Democrats do, but I think this message is one that we have to uh, carry unified and march in lockstep on. Senator, I, I couldn't note, help but notice during this, this conversation that we had in Washington over the last three or four weeks that, that the way that you and Senator Cruz drove the message on Twitter and social media uh, created a fundamentally different message and a more accurate message than anything I saw in the headlines of the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's an important point to remember because the liberal establishment in this country is struggling with the fact that they used to own all channels of communication, all channels that would inform people about what's happening in Washington.
I'm not talking just about Fox News. That's a very small part of this picture. The much bigger part is online media and uh, development like Twitter and Facebook uh, allow for a lot of people uh, to communicate with a lot of other people with virtually no money. Never in the history of humankind has it been possible for so few people with so little money or few resources to communicate with so many. And so it's now influencing every aspect of our political debate and discussion. And as important as anything else, it has ended the chokehold grip that the liberal media establishment long held uh, uh, on the country because other information can get out. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, we don't still face a significant disadvantage because of the uh, significant grip that, that progressives have over the, the news media. But it does mean that information can get out that previously was unaccessible to most people. And uh, that cannot be overstated. It's one of the many reasons why it's important for conservatives to remain very, very active online. I, I know that most people on the call, including a number of bloggers, have been driving that message from the bottom up. Uh, Whitney, mm -hmm. uh, one more question. Okay, so we have another question from Jack Atkins in Oregon. And Jack wants to know, as you look at the law, have you found any evidence that there's corporate cronyism from the health care providers themselves that are underwriting Obamacare? Or what kind of you know, situation through the exchanges are you seeing there? Uh, Congressman Graves, do you want to tackle that one? Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, certainly do my best. Uh, I would suspect that any time you have the federal government taking over a stick of the economy, there's a little bit of cronyism involved. So uh, I, I would uh, I would tend to guess that that is clearly the case and that there's been political points and, and rewards to uh, the various uh, uh, groups or, or organizations, uh, which is a, just a totally another reason why this is a, a bad law uh, and really why it doesn't work. You're trying to please so many different groups and reward them. Ultimately, it's not going to come together to the best interest of uh, the taxpayers. Uh, and, and then I guess when you look at the premiums rise, you see the policy uh, putting the, the higher out-of-pocket expenses, the higher deductibles, uh, and fewer options. Um, that does nothing but uh, uh, bolster uh, folks who, uh, who have been complying with the wishes of, of the administration. Uh, if I could just step back to the first question uh, in, in about millennials and, and, and the impact and how do we connect in there. You know, what I have found, and I have put great respect for uh, is the generation of millennial, is that the very independent, very individualism, a lot of individualism there, and if there's one about this one, but just strike and, and for contrast uh, the way a millennial would think. It would be the fact that you have zero options to choose from, and you're one of two things. The federal government's going to tell you what you have to do, and uh, if you don't have that opportunity as an individual to choose what's best for you and your circumstances or for your family or for your interests. Uh, so that is uh, an entire contrast to, uh, to, the, to that generation. So uh, a awesome job now. Signing off here, but uh, thank you once again to all the activists. Um, uh, I think on behalf of uh, House Republicans and conservatives, uh, you guys are, are the, uh, I'd say that the heart and soul of, uh, of our constituency. Thank you for that. That's all you did. Well, thank you. Um, uh, Senator, you, you have to get on to another call. Do you have time for one more question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, let's take one more question, and then we can take a few more after Senator Lee has to go. Okay, well, we have been asked this question in many shapes and forms tonight, but um, it, they want to know what is the best way for activists to deal with the fact that many um, in the Senate GOP didn't stand with um, Senator Lee, with Senator Cruz, um, on issues like the defunct battle, and what can they do to motivate these guys to stand with them? Okay, so the first and most important thing to remember is that we, we are where we are, and even though we wish that things had turned out differently uh, with respect to the defund fight approaching the continuing resolution, we've got to start from where we are rather than where we wish we could have been. We need to focus on the fact that we really do expect those who were elected uh, by voters uh, under the promise that we would fight Obamacare with everything in it. The, the voters expect Republicans to follow through with that. They expect them to do everything they possibly
possibly can, even when, especially when, fighting against Obamacare is risky politically. The more that can be communicated to, to every Republican, the better off we're going to be in this fight. Uh, one of the many problems that we have in Washington is that people in both houses and in both political parties really uh, are, are focused far too much on perpetual incumbency, on perpetual re-election. That is not the most important thing. The most important thing is, is defending the rights of the people. And the most important thing is looking out for the interests of the people. Mm-hmm. And so that is going to mean from time to time that people who serve in Washington, particularly those who have been elected to fight against the constant, aggressive, out-of-control growth of government, have to do things that are sometimes difficult. Mm-hmm. And that when they bow out, simply because there are risks attached to the task at hand, or because victory is far from certain, that uh, the voters aren't going to put up with that anymore. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we can move forward with that positive message, and we can find ways to stop this law, but we've got to be united as Republicans if we're going to succeed at doing so. Thank, thank you, Senator Lee, and I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and, and to, to follow up on that question, I think Senator Lee himself demonstrates exactly how you should deal with, with Republicans or Democrats or neighbors, anybody that is skeptical um, and maybe even frustrated with you for fighting on this issue, um, know the facts, stay calm, and persevere. And I think that describes uh, Senator Lee's efforts and that describes all the um, legislators on the call. Um, I am available to take a few more questions. Uh, we, we are going to lose um, uh, some of the other folks on the call, but why don't we uh, take a few more and, and see how many we can get through. Okay, great. Well, we have another question from Dell in Texas. And he actually know, wants to know, what is the plan for the next big fight? Where do we go from here? Okay, uh, I will take a crack at that, and I will see who else is on the call. Um, I think that uh, the, the, this fight over the individual mandate, making sure that um, everybody is treated exactly the same as everybody else under the law, making sure that, that Congress doesn't get generous subsidies that, that no other Americans um, under the health care law, I think that's the fight. And we wanted to relieve everybody mm-hmm. from the burdens of Obamacare, but uh, the Democrats refused to do that. So we're, we're going to focus on the individual mandate. We're going to focus on the, the so-called bitter amendment, which uh, forces all members of Congress and staff to um, live under the Obamacare exchanges without some generous subsidy not available to other people. Um, we're going to look for opportunities to do that. We're going to focus um, um, primarily on red state Democrats because those are the swing votes in the House and Senate. And as, as the other um, folks on the call have already pointed out, um, the, the cracks in the armor are already there. The Democrats are, are running away from the dysfunction of Obamacare, and, and they need to own that now. And that's, mm-hmm. that's what we do over the next several months. And I suspect we're going to have this conversation all the way up to Election Day yep. in, in 2014. Um, is anyone else still on the call? Yes. Yeah, yeah uh, Matt, this is Matt Sam, and I, I'm still on. And I, I believe uh, that uh, Harry Reid will be everything within his power uh, to never, ever uh, have to put his members through a vote on the, on the Vitter Amendment, uh, which would take away the general subsidies from members of Congress uh, and their staff. I don't think he'll ever let that go to the floor, but that doesn't uh, obviate uh, our uh, uh, responsibility to keep pushing forward on it because it's a 90-10 issue, Matt, and it's, it's, you know, out out there in the public, people uh, don't don't like uh, America being under one uh, set of rules and Congress being under another one. Amen. Um, Congressman... uh,